we are continuing with our day five and uh, still our theme for this week is get ready and stay ready. Yeah, I'll be faster just to be on time. Okay, our key thought for this week is uh, from First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. And the Bible says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught together with, the, with, the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Okay. Uh, yesterday, we looked at uh, William Miller uh, in our first day on how on how uh, our last day when uh, people are not ready. You see, when in 1844, uh, October 22nd, had predicted that Christ would come, and uh, we found out that the dates were right, but the event was wrong. Instead, Christ was moving from the, ho the, the holy to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary to atone for our sins. And we see that the mistake that people did, they had closed their shops, they had sold their property, they were really ready for the coming of Christ. But at the end of the day, Christ did not come and turned out to be a great disappointment. And most of the followers of William Miller, they left him. So, so those, they, they couldn't even want to hear again the smile Jesus is coming back because they're already disappointed. So we have people even today who are really disappointed. Even as I told you before, I think I was in primary when I also had Christ was coming back and need to come back. So people right now, they think there's no Christ. We just live life like that. But we see that William Miller, the good thing is, and his little followers, they didn't give up. They went back to scriptures and see what really went wrong. And it's where we see the Seventh-day Adventist Church coming from. Okay, yesterday, we as well looked at this scripture in Matthew 24, 36, 39, that says, but of the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only, so meaning even the son doesn't know. 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day no entered the ark and did not know the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the, will be the coming of man. We saw this yesterday, but it's like today people are marrying every week in and out. People are eating, people are going to their jobs. Mm? Life is normal. Mm? Even though people are dying, but that has been normal life. So that's how Christ will come. Mm? Because we are, we are not sure. The Bible says there won't be any sign that shows that Christ is coming back next to such as we can all repent. But we'll be there. Probation will end and Christ will come. And once you'll be found and, and, and like we'll be caught like a thief, Without oil, you you have not repented, your life will have gone, and you will be no more. Okay. Uh, how do we prepare for the end? Part one. Tomorrow it will be the end. It will, we shall be seeing part two, which is the last day the, on Sabbath. But today, as we prepare for the Sabbath, let us see how to prepare for the end. Part one. Okay. Matthew 24, 14, the Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. You see, this is happening now already. And we were told in the Bible that society will become an like Sodom and Gomorrah just before Jesus is returned. And this is happening. We've seen homosexuals here around. People coming out that me, I was born a man, but I feel I'm a woman. 
I was both a woman, but I feel I am a man. Some have even gone up to go on surgeries that they want to be made female, but when they are male, they want to be male, made male, but when they are female originally. Hmm? So meaning you can be born a boy, but later choose to be a lady, choose to be a woman. So <laughs> that is an abomination to God. Hmm? Because there are two things that Satan has really caught, caught in his hands and wants to use them against God. That is marriage and Sabbath. Hmm? Okay. Lying and deception of all kinds have entered every phase of our society. Predictions of financial corrupts and financial corrupts are hard on every hand. Natural and man-made disasters are seen through the whole world. We, see this, we saw this in our day one and day two of the signs of the end. And in addition, you see, spiritualism is becoming more and more prominent through various ways spiritualism has entered into the lives of people and its influence is spreading in every culture around the world. You see people coming up with, uh, like coming up with the crowds. Hmm? Out of the brew, you see Fanero Thursday, uh, Rugogo is filled up. Hmm? You see Mbonye, even big people, ministers go there. Hmm? Because those guys have, have the, what they want to, to, to hear too. I hear this Sunday at a Fanero, they, they, they are going to be clapping, what record for Guinness, clapping for almost the whole day. So what's that? But that's what people want. They want now to break a record of clapping hands. Mm -hmm. hmm? What well, they want to listen, so many women empowering women, so many empowering men, so many love, love this, love that. But I've never had anything like preparing for the soon coming of Christ. That's what people want to listen to. And the youths are there because they target the youth because that's the audience, that's the energy. Hmm? So, people, brethren, if you are not serious, you shall be taken away. And these are our friends that we are studying with students at campus, and they are our friends, the influencers, also some of us go there. But let's be watch. Keep, let, let's be watchmen. Let's do what the waiters do. But you've been warned here, the things are going to come up, and they're already up here. So, get ready and stay ready. Uh -huh. So, we are going to see, as the seventh Adventist, what are we meant to do as we prepare for the end? Hmm? How shall we get ready and stay ready? Hmm? We see that we are at, we are to act in a Christ-like manner, speak with great respect and love as we share his love and truth. And it is essential that we maintain our hold on Christ and his word. Only his word will give us strength only by relying completely on Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit will be able to accomplish anything. In whatever you do, let Christ be on your front side. Let him lead you. Let him be your example. Hmm? Don't be influenced by the mockers and, and snoofers of this world. But let the Bible inspire you. Wake up in the day, read your Bible. Hmm? That's, some, that's why some of us ought to bring this morning fresh up because we know it may be hard for some people to wake up and read the Bible, but someone can wake up and be on, on Zoom and listen to the word of God. Maybe we pray together, go to work. Sometimes we have evening studies. Hmm? So if you can't keep yourself around the word of God, the word will take you. You'll find when the word desires are on your front line. And they'll keep put you captive, whereby you won't decide for yourself, but they're going to decide for you. At the end of the day, Christ will find you when you're not ready. Probation will close when you don't have enough oil. So if you believe that the end will come, how do we prepare? But we are going to see in 2 Peter 3.11, uh, we are going to see the clearest screw on this question of how do we prepare. 2 Peter 3.11, the Bible says that seeing then that all things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in holy conversation and in godliness? Mm -hmm. 
Peter is saying that since everything will be destroyed, since the earth is going to be burnt and laid bare in the end, as we saw in verse 10 yesterday, hmm? or as we, we read, because it will be destroyed, you ought to live a holy, hmm? a holy and good lives. Hmm? So this one goes back, to, of course, to what we've been saying, that if you believe he could come back any day, you will live a different way. Hmm? And Peter really that was a different and interesting angle here, as we've been reading. Peter is saying, be holy and godly because the earth will burn. Hmm? Be passionate about your spiritual life because all of the material and temporal things are going to waste away and they don't matter. Hmm? If the earth is going to be destroyed, why are you obsessed with earthly and temporary concerns? Or where do most of us find our worth? In earthly things? Hmm? Or in what we have? Like our cars, our house, we finally arrived with that. We are homeowners, we have businesses, we own hotels, hmm? we have master's degrees, we have PhDs, and we've made it in life. Hmm? Or we find our comfort in other things we can accomplish, like in our jobs, hmm? our qualifications and ETC. Or maybe we find it in our accumulations, hmm? or hobbies, or collections. I'm a footballer, I've made it in life. I earn this amount of money per month. Hmm? But it all just be in an instant and burned and gone. Eh? Okay. You see, if you want to prepare for the end times, hmm? uh, Jesus said, keep watch. James said, it's near. Paul says, thief in the night. These are scriptures we looked about in the previous, just I'm, I'm, I'm summarizing them here. So I'm yet to imagine like if most of you start living a life it could be today. Hmm? Sometimes I think the coming of the end makers, the coming of the end makes more sense to us if you condense the time frame. I'm going to give you an example as we end that. Let's say you are pressed in a large room with 30 people and there's a lot of entertainment. It's an example. There is many things to do there. You have games, there is karaoke, there are movies to watch. And there are even a few clubs where you can go run for office and feel important in a large room. Hmm? But as a person who let you in, shut the door, and then tell you in five hours, this entire complex, this entire cave, this entire building will be set on fire. Hmm? You will die unless you live. Hmm? And this now you are one person, but this goes to all the other 29. Hmm? So it is the same for others, but you are the only one who knows what would you do. Would you spend the next five hours showing everyone that you're the best gamer in the room? You have the best voice in karaoke? Would you help the five hours pass quickly by avenging and watching movies? Eh? Would you find significance in becoming a club president? What would you do? Eh? Or you wouldn't do any of that? Eh? So you try everything you could do in the next five hours, to convince people to stop drowning themselves in destructions and pressure and run from the fire because they're going to burn. Hmm? So now let me ask you the difference. Hmm? What is the difference if you extend it up to 70, 75, let's say 75 years instead of five hours? Hmm? Most of the truth remains whether the, the time is going to be next week Christ to come or next 100 years, the thing remains, you have to be ready. You can't say, I have one year, so let me first sin, and at the end of one year, I'll, I'll pray and repent. No way. You'll be found wanting and 
you will be caught in fire. Hmm? We see that most of us don't spend our lives passionately living for Jesus and helping him in his mission to rescue people from the fire of judgment. We get distracted entertaining ourselves and seeking our own significance. And it's all silly. Hmm? Doesn't make sense. Significance is more silly than living as if today could be the day. Hmm? Even through God knew that it was going to be at least 2,000 years. And I think the Bible is serious and about the imminence or the soon coming of Christ. Hmm? Because the doctrine is a serious aid to us living in our right priorities. You see here, Peter is not discussing the end time so that his readers can exercise draw charts about how the end will come. He's not saying we should get ready so let's draw the dates and know Christ is coming back next week because the Bible is saying no one knows the day, even the hour. But he's discussing it so that in light of it, we would change our priorities hmm, in our lives. Hmm? That's that, that's why he said, live holy and good lives all the time. So, because what is coming could be any day. As we conclude, let's read in uh, 2 Peter 3, 12. The Bible says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat. These are warnings. We should get ready and stay ready because time can be tomorrow. Lastly, let's look in uh, Christ Objective Lessons, page 69. It's, it says, Christ is waiting eh, with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced, in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. It is privilege of every Christian not only to look for, but to hasten the coming of our Jesus Christ in 2 Peter 3 12, as we've seen. We are all, all who profess his name, bearing fruit his glory. How quickly the whole world would be sown with the seed of the gospel. Quickly. The last great harvest, the last great harvest would be ripened and Christ would come to gather the precious grain. Brethren, let's do the mission in Matthew 28, 19-20. All of us on the call, I believe we are baptized. Let us go out there and preach the word. And let people accept, let people be in waters. Let them be baptized and also do the same to others. As by doing that, we are easing on the work of God. We are the people who are stopping Christ to come. Because we have really enjoyed the world that we've forgotten the Creator. We have forgotten the Bible, which guides us on what to do. Hmm? The, the world desires have influenced us, the snuffers and mockers have really influenced our lives. But in the end, they don't want to perish by themselves, but they also want to perish with us. But brethren, I pray that you can wake up and starting from today, live a holy and godly life. Inspire others, love Christ, and wait for his soon coming. So brethren, tomorrow we are going to see our last part on how to prepare and get ready. And I will say, may God bless you. Let us pray and we call it a day. Almighty oh, loving Father, we thank you for it this day. We thank you as we prepare for the Sabbath. We are blessed to be knowing on how to get ready and stay ready for the soon coming of Christ, my Father. As tomorrow we shall be ending on Sabbath. As we had a good week, my Father, we and we thank you all is blessing us. Be here every morning, study your my Father. For all those that have joined in, all those that may not have been getting ready, or may not be knowing that the time is ending, the time is nigh, may you make them ready and stay ready as they do what the waiters do, my Father. We pray as you go out there to work today, my Father. May you provide us with knowledge and understanding. 
May you open our doors. May the sources of income my father multiply such that we can have enough also invest in your gospel, my father. We pray all this, living on Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.